Firstly, what is contact tracing? Well, very simply put, it's the process of us identifying and getting in contact with people that we think are at risk of getting a particular disease, in this case, COVID-19. We give them information and advice, and we ask them to take certain measures to help prevent the onward transmission of the disease should they become symptomatic. Let's imagine a population in which one person has COVID-19. That person, of course, comes into contact with others, and then we have two people who catch the disease. Now we have three infectious people who spread the disease, each to another two people. And as you can see, very quickly the disease spreads. And in this case, with just three generations of transmission, one infected person translates into 26 infected people. And by the 10th generation, this would be over 21,000 people. Now let's look at the same three generations of transmission. But here, where people are coming into contact with each other far less often because of restrictions on movement. Now, of course, these kinds of restrictions can have a devastating effect on people's lives and on the economy. And governments don't take these restrictions lightly. But they can't lift the restrictions until they sure that mechanisms are in place that will prevent and at least mitigate any risk of a second wave of the outbreak hitting the population. And that's the value of contact tracing. Now the point of contact tracing is that we can create that same physical distance, but specifically between people where there is an opportunity to break the chain of transmission. Let me show you how that works. When a person is diagnosed with COVID-19, we identify the people that have been exposed to that person and may be at risk of developing the disease. And we ask those people to restrict their movements and to create physical distance from others. And in this example, let's imagine that three of the people that were in contact with him develop COVID-19. Because of the physical distancing created by the contact tracing program, those people have not put anybody else at risk and the chain of transmission can be broken. Those people will of course recover and return to their normal lives. Almost all people that have recovered are no longer susceptible. In other words, they've got an element of immunity. And so the return of previously ill people back to society starts to create what we call epidemiological distance between susceptible people, a kind of epidemiological firewall, you could say. And this of course also contributes to the slowing down of transmission in the community. I hope you found that useful. I have some other videos that you might like. There'll be links in the description below. For example, a video that I put together in 2018 in which I highlight the risks of zoonotic outbreaks with pandemic potential. I've also got videos on outbreak control and things like how to create and how to interpret epidemic curves. Thanks for watching. Stay safe.